Thank you very much. Thank you, Brad, for that. Let us be called to worship um, and in prayer. Um, let us pray. Source of all creation, maker of the world and everything in it, you are never far from each one of us. We come into this time of worship seeking you, praising you, opening our hearts and minds to your presence, O giver of life and breath. Reveal yourself to us, dwell with us, and abide in us. We live because of you. We hope because of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, in whom we live, and the spirit of truth who abides in us, we pray. And we continue our prayer together with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now Cynthia will offer our solo for this evening. I'll give you a thumbs up when we're ready to go. in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. In my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Great. Thank you very, very much, Cynthia. It was really lovely. Our scripture reading for this evening is from John chapter 14. Um, verses 15 through 21, just following immediately after our uh, verses uh, from last week. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me 
will be loved by my father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Here ends our reading from scripture. May God bless us with understanding. Amen. We are again this week in the early stages of the quite long farewell discourse with just a few short verses. Yet in this short piece, there are quite a few things going on, quite a few options that ought to grab our attention in the short little section of a very long speech that Jesus gives to his closest friends and companions during that event later called the Last Supper, Jesus offers a bunch of options for a homily or a sermon. Commandments, love, and the relationship between love and keeping commandments. And then there's this advocate, the spirit of truth, the comforter, the companion, depending on your translation, also known as the paraclete, if you want it to sound a little bit more like Greek. Then there's knowing and abiding. I will not leave you orphaned. And all that stuff about who is in whom and so on. And more love and commandments. Where even to begin, it's hard to know. In these strange days in which we now live, we may have some new insight or a few new questions about what this is all about and how it works and how it has to do with us and the lives that we live love and commandments, connection to the spirit of truth, knowing and abiding, not feeling orphaned, one in another, love and commandments. What does this all mean? And what does this all mean at a time like now, in the midst of pandemic, stay at home orders, and the threat of an enemy we cannot even see without a microscope? I've been thinking quite a lot, not so much about this small paragraph, but about the larger context in which it was written as a story to help those who would come along later. John himself and the community of which he was part, a later community, later in the first century. Got John gathered up stories and put them together to offer guidance and hope to share the path of love and life. How do we live? Who are we and to whom we, do we belong? John offered this story of this last gathering before the trial and crucifixion of Jesus, a time when Jesus shared important information, a time when Jesus told his followers how they would be without his physical presence. His physical self may no longer be with them, but they would not be alone, not even a little bit. There's knowing and abiding, there's connection and relationship, there's love and hope and the relationship between knowing and experiencing the love of Jesus and how that influences every aspect of how we live, even when our lives have been turned upside down and inside out. And there's this spirit, the spirit of truth, the advocate, the comforter, the companion, the helper, the paraclete. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, you know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Do you feel the advocate's presence? Do you know the spirit? Does the comforter live in you and through you in each of us and all of us together? How do we sense the spirit in days such as these? Now that we don't have our usual paths of connection, we are learning to be creative, to stretch our imaginations, our boundaries. We are learning new ways of being attentive, new ways of reaching out. And often these new ways aren't new at all. How many of you have found, your sp found yourselves spending more time in the old fashioned art of a phone call or sending a card or a note? John's Gospel like the other Gospels, is full of stories. Today's must, may sound an awful lot like instruction, but it's also an invitation in part of a story. Open your heart and your mind. Things are going to get difficult. So you're going to need to get creative and to open your minds and your hearts to perhaps something you're not all that accustomed to opening yourself to. Open your imagination, for God is present. Jesus is present, 
and the spirit is present, but not always in the same way or in the same place. How are you connecting to the creative spirit of truth, the ongoing life of Christ and the holy work of God, our creator? In what ways are you looking for the presence of the spirit in your own life? How are you being called to live in love and hope in the midst of the challenges we are experiencing? The stories of the gospels are many things, and one of those things is invitation. So I'm also thinking about invitation today and story. Do you have a story to tell about how you have discovered a new, perhaps even creative way of living a life of love and hope? Or perhaps you've reconnected with an old way, like using the phone or writing a letter. Or maybe you've been asking some new questions or finding yourself frustrated by the challenges of these days searching and wondering about where the spirit is. Or perhaps you're keenly feeling grief and loss and struggling to make sense of it all. Do you have a story to tell? I'd like you to consider telling a story and sharing a story, writing down a story from this time, at least one, but it could be more, and I'd like to gather our stories, our stories from this strange time, but also this time that offers such a fruitful time of exploration, of learning to love and hope in a new way or in an old way that has become richer and more powerful. This is also a time that opens up the possibility of asking questions or considering our struggles of lifting up our grief. Where have you connected with the spirit? In what ways are you reaching out in love and hope? Or what questions are you asking, wondering about? What is a story that you should capture from this time? A story that may offer something valuable to someone many years from now. A way of knowing and abiding, of being with the spirit and living in the midst of the spirit. What story can you tell of the presence of the spirit in your life? And would you be willing to write it down? I hope so. I'll be sending out an email this week. I'll also be posting this on our website and on our Facebook page with a bit more information about this gathering of stories. But for now, take a moment and think about a story you might tell. A story of love and hope, a story of spirit and connection a story of abiding presence. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be with you and in you. Praise be to God. Amen. Our hymn this week is Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. I think we're ready to switch to that. You can sing along.
we sounded great, didn't we? <laughs> it's one of my favorite hymns. I'm glad that I found it. It is time for our mission moment. And so we will turn to Christine to, uh, to give that to us. As soon as we're ready, I'll give you a, a thumbs up, Christine. Great, go ahead. In today's reading, Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. In John 13, 34, a new commandment, um, Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you will also love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples. We too can be Christ's disciples today. We can keep this commandment by reaching out to help feed the growing number of people experiencing food insecurity. It is one way to show our love by feeding the hungry, as Jesus did when he fed the 5,000 with the fields, fishes, and loaves, as he did when he helped create new wine at the wedding service. Let us remember that as we give generously to help um, support food banks in this state and in our local community for our mission this month. Thank you, Christine, very, very much. Just to encourage all of you to continue to support our ministry and our church. Um, you may give um, to Outreach or to the church in general by sending donations to Wendy at her home or you can send them to the church. And again, I would continue to encourage you to find other ways of sharing um, the good news and love and hope with others um, in the different ways that we can um, do so under these very, uh, these truly extraordinary circumstances, but obviously lots of places and lots of opportunities for us to share love and hope and uh, to give of ourselves. So I would encourage you to do that and would ask for God's blessings to be upon our many offerings that we, that we seek to give. We, we come now to our time of just sharing a few joys and concerns before I lead us together. I don't think we received anything through the chat function, but I do have a couple of things to share with you today. Um, say first, for those of you who have been uh, doing online worship with us for a while, you might remember that early on we had our house guest here. Her name was Anron, who was joining us for worship. And we did learn the other day that Anron has safely made it back uh, to China uh, after very uh, long journey um, and we're very glad that she is safely back in China and heading towards her her family's home. I would offer, I would also um, ask for prayers for the main conference. Um, yesterday um, the board of directors held um, a meeting, our monthly meeting, um, supposed to be about three hours long and it was five hours long. Um, at the end of the day, I can't say very much about what transpired during that meeting. There'll be some, some news that will come out probably next week. Um, from that, there's some things we need to kind of work out, but it was a very, very, very hard meeting and um, very difficult um, with just a lot of, there's just a lot of stuff going on, a lot of very difficult decisions. Um, certainly, everything that's happening with Pilgrim Lodge among them and some other things that are happening. So a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of wrestling with important and big decisions. So I would really appreciate um, knowing that we are, that the conference and the conference leadership is in your prayers. And then finally, just uh, um, on a personal note, Margaret and Joseph will be leaving on Saturday to head to Florida where Margaret starts a new job on June 1st. So, um, ask for a prayer or two for their their journey and for starting a new job under these really very uh, very strange circumstances um, but anyway let's take a moment to lift up our personal prayers our personal concerns let's take a moment just to be in silence and to listen for god's voice before i lead us together let us pray
we bring our weariness and tiredness to you, O gracious and holy God. For you pick up those who have fallen and raise up those who are brought low. Bless those loving God who are bowed down under the burdens they must carry. We pray for those who are crushed by their responsibilities and those who feel the pain of our world so deeply, so keenly. Help them to keep going. Bring supportive friends alongside them. Give them tokens of your grace, fresh vision and courage and signs of encouragement in their struggle. Let us take our loneliness to God along with our questions and our struggles. Merciful God, we ask your blessing upon those who are lonely, those who have grown old and whom the passing years have taken all their friends and contemporaries. Bless those who are shy, who find it hard to initiate conversation, have difficulty in fostering and maintaining friendships. We pray for strangers in foreign lands, for asylum seekers and refugees, separated by language and culture from familiar ways and much loved customs. We remember those who feel alone. Help the church, we pray, help us even in these days of distancing to be a place of acceptance and belonging, a place of welcome and inclusion where all can find a home, a listening ear, a friendly smile and a helping hand. We bring this day our sorrows to you, O God, you who bind up the brokenhearted, you who comfort those who mourn, bless those whose hearts are sore today. Be very close to those whose family circle has been darkened by death. We remember those who have lost loved ones for whom they have cared, whose needs they have met, whose lives have been so intertwined, they still listen for a voice they will not hear again. We remember wives who have lost husbands and husbands who have lost wives, parents who have lost children, who find their homes strangely silent and empty now, and children who have lost parents, who are confused by a world that seems less secure and more frightening than before, and all those for whom familiar places and sounds and smells awaken memories that bring tears in their wake. We thank you, O oh God, for our lives of faith. Let us turn to you and trust and recommit ourselves to you. Send us forth this day with the joy that no one can take from us, the life which is your life and the hope that gives strength to our actions. Help us to trust in Jesus who lived among us, the one who promised that we will never be orphaned, our savior and our friend, the one risen in this season, in this Easter time. Amen. Thank you, thank you very much. So before I offer the blessing and then we'll hear another postlude from Brad, another piece that he uh, recorded on the organ, I just wanna say um, thanks. Thanks to Brad um, for, for the live music as well as the recorded music to Cynthia um, and certainly for your flexibility and changing the worship time. I do want to thank my technical crew, um, Joe and his intern, John. Hopefully things will run uh, much more smoothly next week. Um, but I'm glad that you're able to join us uh, this evening and uh, look forward to seeing you during the week and next Sunday as well. Wherever we are, we are in God. Wherever we are, we are in Christ and Christ is in us. Wherever we are, the spirit abides with us and in us. We go forth in peace and hope, upheld by God in every way. Let us go forth in faithfulness and trust. May all see the divine in and through us. Amen. <laughs>